Hello everyone, in today's class we're going to do some review about chapter 9 and chapter 10. So, um, for chapter 9 and chapter 10 there are certain identities, we're working in trigonometrical identities, uh, and there are certain identities that you should know. So first one is uh, the relationship between negative angles with the uh, cosine and sine, so what we call the even odd identities. Uh, and this, the first one, is that the cosine of minus theta is equals to the cosine of theta. So taking the cosine of a negative angle is going to be the same that taking the cosine of that positive angle. So for example, if we have cosine of minus pi over 4, that's going to be the same that cosine of pi over 4. In the case of the sine, things are a little bit different. Since uh, what happens is that we're going to need to pull out the minus from the angle. So as you can see here, we have sine of minus theta, that's going to be equals to minus sine of theta. Uh, that translates that if we have something like sine of minus pi over 4, then we can think of this as minus sine of pi over 4. Now the second identity that is going to be fundamental to have is of course the Pythagorean identity, which is one of the main uh, trigonometric identities that we're going to use overall. This is the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Once that you have this, then you can put this identity in terms of either of the cosines or the sine squared. So that's what you can see down below here. We can just say, oh, okay, let's solve for cosine squared. So we're going to move this sine squared to the other side, and cosine squared is just going to be 1 minus sine squared. Uh, also, if we have sine squared here, we can just solve for sine squared and we'll see, well, this is going to be 1 minus cosine squared. These identities are useful when you're trying to replace and find other identities or to put everything in terms of a single thing, like everything in terms of sine or everything in terms of cosine. And of course, we have the sum and difference of the angles that we saw last class. So we have each of those identities here. Uh, and just a reminder that uh, for the sign, uh, we do have use in the middle of the sign that we have here. So for example, sine of a plus b is just going to be sine of a cosine of b plus sine of b, sine of b, b cosine of a. But when we have sine of a minus b, that's just sine of a cosine of b. And because we have this minus here, then we have a minus here. And so sine of b cosine of a. However, for the cosine identities, that gets flipped. So notice that where we have the plus, now here we have the minus, and here we have the minus, then we have the plus here. Again, you don't need to memorize this identity, but you need to have clear which one you're going to use. So it's always good to know that if you're having here the plus, then here you're going to have the minus, and if you have a minus here, you're going to have the plus for the cosine. And that sign is, stays with the corresponding signs. Now let's take a look at some of the things that we can do with this thing. So um, for this first question, we're actually going to use the sum and the difference identities for the cosine and sine. And we have different things that we can do. We can do either folding or we can do expansions. Uh, so the more easy to see initially is going to be uh, EFG, which are already on the form of this. And then we can just kind of fold into something. So for example, number one, we, we see that this is a cosine cosine. So cosine cosine is one of this two. It's, it's going to be a cosine formula. And we see that we have the middle, we have a minus here. So we're working with this particular formula. So this is just going to be cosine of 87 plus 93. And so if we add that, this is just going to be cosine of 90 plus 90 is going to be cosine of 180. And of course, we're thinking about degrees. And so um, this will be pi, which is going to yield to minus 1. So this is one of the purposes of the sum and difference identities is that we can fold back to something that we can calculate easily and then uh, use the information that we have in the special angles to um, calculate the final result. Now for f, we have sine cosine, sine cosine, so we're going to be one in, in the top, we got to be in the formula on the top, 
Yeah, as you can see, the sign here is plus, so we're actually using the sign of the sum. And so this is going to be sine of 196 degrees plus 94. And so this is going to be sine of, um, and this is two, 290. So at that point, we condense everything in a single sign, and then we can compute uh, the value that we have over there. Okay, so we get that this is the sine of 290 degrees. Which uh, you can compute then in your calculator if it's necessary or um, find a fraction. In here, um, if we just compute by that, it's gonna be minus point uh, 93. We're actually approximating point 0.94. Oh, wait a minute. I'm using the wrong thing. I'm using 94. That's why it's getting so difficult here. Um, because I'm using the wrong thing. This is 74 instead of 94. Okay, so now this is 270. So now that makes more sense uh, because this is... Um, a sign of an special angle. So now I can actually find out what is the sign of 270, which, which is in a special angle. And um, if you remember on the from the unit circle, uh, this is also going to be minus one because we are we are over here, and we take in the minus one and the y coordinate. Now, um, for G, we have again a sine, cosine, sine, cosine situation. So, but we have a minus in the middle. So that means that we're using A minus B. So this is sine of, and then we have 40 minus 160, according to the way that this is laid out. And uh, this is going to be sine of minus 120. And so, of course, um, when we have a negative sign, then we can use the identity uh, for the even and odd function. So we can check up sine of minus theta. This is minus sine of theta. So we can see this as minus sine of 120. And if you think about uh, what this is, um, in terms of radians, of course, uh, this is gonna be uh, 60 by two, and 60 is pi over three, so this is like sine of two pi over three. And then you can probably find out that this is the square root of three over two, so this can be written as minus the square root of three over two. Now, um, let's go to the second functionality of the sum of the difference identities, which is when we have already a, um, something that is written in this form, but uh, we want to find out uh, the cosine or the sine of a specific angle that is not that easy to uh, compute. So for example, here we have cosine of 105. Uh, and 105 can be easily seen as cosine of 60 plus 45. 
that's 105. And so that would be cosine of 60, cosine of 45. And then also sine of 60, sine of 45. And so we have minus uh, sine of 60, sine of 45. Let me erase this circle over here. So I have some space. <clears throat> And of course, um, this is going to be then cosine of 60 is going to be 1 half. Cosine of 45 is going to be square root of 2 over 2 minus sine of 60, which is going to be square root of 3 over 2 and sine of 45 square root of 2 over 2. If you want, you can simplify uh, this value. And this is going to be square root of 2 over 4 minus the square root of 6 over 4. Now, um, B uh, put us on sine of 190. Now, one of the things that we got to think when we're doing this particular um, expansion for an angle is what are the type of angles of special angles that we're going to use? Uh, for example, in this case, we have 195. 195 can be represented uh, in very different very different ways um, I could represent this as uh, a sum or a subtraction so if I'm doing a sum uh, I gotta I gotta finish with something that ends up in uh, 95 so I need an angle I need a special angle with a 5 at the end so what are those 45 135 225 and 315. Uh, so one of those then it could be 135 plus uh, 60. That will be one representation of this. The other representation could be a sine and then uh, it can go with something larger than this. So 225 minus 30. But this sum and this subtraction are gonna lead me to 195. Of course, uh, what are you gonna use? Well, that depends on what are the special angles that you remember better, that you can deal with it better. So in this case, uh, using for me the smaller angles is gonna be used um, more, more easy. So I'm gonna do 135 cosine of 60, and then uh, plus uh, sine of 60, Cosine of 135. This is your easier. It's just easier to manage with uh, angles that are smaller, since I don't have to deal with uh, signs or more complicated signs if I if I need to. So uh, here, uh, sine of 135, of course, is going to be square root of two over two, and cosine of 60 is going to be one half, and then uh, plus sine of 60 which is going to be square root of 3 over 2 and cosine of 135 which is minus the square root of 2 over 2. Uh, so I can simplify this. This is square root of 2 over 4 minus the square root of 6 over 4. Same thing can be done with sine of minus 15. In class we already had an example where we see this one as sine of um, 45 minus 60, right? That's gonna give me minus 15. But I can also see it as sine of, um, what else can give me minus 15? 135 minus 150. All those are special angles. And so it, it just, again, depends on what you wanna use to get that. You already saw this one in class, so let me use the last one. Then let me use this one. Sine of 135, uh, cosine of 150, and then minus um, sine of 150, cosine of uh, 135. 
It's very important to be consistent with the formula, to remember what formula you're using, and just plug the right formula, okay? So now this is here, square root of two over two, and this is uh, minus the square root of three over two, and the minus, and sine of 150 is one half, and cosine of 135 is minus the square root of two over two. So at the end, uh, notice this is gonna give me a square root of two over four minus uh, a square root of six over four. So similar result that, that on the top. Now we've done this with degrees a couple times, but there's no reason why we just need to do it with degrees. We can just do this with uh, radians as well. As you notice, here we have pi over 12. Um, because radians are fractions in the special angle, then it's a little bit more difficult to manage that when um, with degrees. Uh, but you just got to remember that you're using essentially, you, you want to have a split of two fractions. And so that split of two fractions gives you um, this uh, to operate with this formula. And so at the end, you get a, you have this as your result currently. So this pi over 12 is what this is. So this means that this 12 is the multiplication of two numbers, Q and S. And those are the two numbers that you need to find out to, do, to, to know if you do a sum or a subtraction. Now, if you are going to do pi over 12, it means that 12 got to be the multiplication of this two. And there are only two options for 12. 12 is either 6 by 2 or 12 is either 3 by 4. So um, it means that it got to be a sum or a subtraction of things uh, with pi over 6, pi over 2, and pi over 3 and pi over 4. However, uh, notice that if you do things with pi over 6 and pi over 2, the top is never going to be pi. So that's not going to work out. So I'm gonna to need to do pi over three minus pi over four. Why? Because when you multiply this, you get four pi minus three pi, and then that's pi. And below you get 12. That's not gonna happen with pi over six, pi over two. None of those combinations will give you a top where the top is pi, okay? So those are the type of restrictions in that you operate here when you're doing this with these fractions. So now uh, this is cosine of this, so it's gonna be cosine of pi over three, cosine of pi over four. We have a minus here, so that becomes a plus. And then sine of pi over three, sine of pi over four. And I'm gonna leave it there for you to complete. Uh, these are very common special angles. We've been using it, uh, same thing here. This is one half, the square root of two over two, square root of three over two, and the square root of two over two, so you can complete the fraction that works in here.